guys, and welcome to RC Cincy. I'm pretty excited to bring you this uh, pretty popular truck. I've seen a lot of talk about it on the internet. We're going to see what it's about. Uh, so let's get into the unboxing. We'll try to drift a little bit on the carpet right here. Uh, it is wet and snowy outside, so I don't know if we'll get the outdoor run today. But we'll see all its features and see what it's about. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this is, uh, I do believe it's 116 scale. Um, what's the brand? Pinecone model. <laughs> Never heard of that. Uh, I think it's like a clone of a WL Toys. They're all cloning each other. Uh, there's a lot of different companies and manufacturers making similar ones. It says racing, 116 scale, four wheel drive. And it does have the ESP, uh, effectively correct y'all, easier to control um high speed racing on that side shows you the truck version that it's four wheel drive uh the features and everything is the same it's just the bodies are different four wheel drive ready to run it's got lights uh lipo battery uh gyro stabilization is the esp uh it's got an esc and it's got also another set of all-terrain tires just shows you the chassis that is the car version you can also get it in a truck like this i just saw a lot of trucks on the internet so i figure why not get something different the car um, so let's go ahead and get into it. So I did open one of the sides just to charge the battery so I could, uh, do the run video and everything. So let's go ahead and pull this out. And the, the sticker perfectly peeled, so I just put it right back on. That's how I was able to cut it. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. So it was zip tied. You have to remove the body clips and remove two zip ties on either ends to get the vehicle out. So it was secured properly. Then uh, let's just get everything out really quickly. Um, put that to the side. Let me get all this stuff out of here. Perfect. So let's start with the instructions. Wow. That's definitely Chinese or Japanese or something. Hopefully it has an English version in here. So it shows the car, the parts, product uh, configuration. So it shows the car, the body, the charger, everything you get in the box. So you do get car and all these components. It talks about the vehicle itself, the battery, and talks about the motor, upper chassis, steering, servo, front shocks, lower tower. Just talks about all the parts, which is nice to know to how to identify them. And I'm sure it has replacement parts. It shows you how to properly charge the battery. What function does what? That's nice to know. So um, shows you how to plug it up. I'm curious on this though. Uh, forward and backward. I'm curious on the auxiliary switches on the controller. So it does. I think it has like three, cha four channels maybe. I think it's a four channel vehicle. Uh, it just talks about everything. Steering trim, throttle trim, positions, modes this and that, replacing tires, working on it. It does have a full uh, disassembly uh, schematics, which you can appreciate just how you know how to replace and uh, remove parts. And it has numbers, meaning you should be able to get all these parts on this side for it. So that is nice that you can get parts for it. And I'm, a, I'm sure I would imagine that you can also get hop-up kits. So that's really nice. Uh, let's see what you get in this bag everything out make it easier <laughs> whoops one of the wheels went away so right off the bat you can see we get another set of wheels so these are grippier tires um they're not super supple they are a little soft uh, not the softest tires they should do okay though uh maybe if you want a little more grip and you don't want to drift so you get a set of four that's nice um on the vehicle there are drift tires of course and then you get a USB charger. I'm glad they started going with USB instead of all those different country, different adapters. USB is basically pretty standard. You can use a, uh, you can use one of these uh, uh, power banks like so. You can use a computer, a desktop, a laptop. Uh, every phone has usually a USB plug on the power adapter, whatever country you're from. So you just plug this in. So that's really nice. Uh, it says charging power, so it flashes when it's charging. I guess it goes solid when it's done or it goes out. I can't remember. It does 1.5 milliamps per hour, so that's decent charging. 
uh, and it only does two cell. Sometimes you'll get one that does two and three cell. This one only does two cell. Uh, it does run on 7.4 volt battery. So that's the charger for it. And then you get some other accessories right here, which is pleasantly, uh, I'm pleasantly surprised, honestly. So let's set this down. Oh, there's still one more thing in there. So you get a small screwdriver uh, to work on something or tighten something up that is nice to have. These wrenches right here are very, very useful, uh, especially being a metal one. Sometimes you get the plastic ones. Those are kind of not that good. Uh, the metal ones are definitely a lot better. So this will be your wrench for like uh, your wheels and everything like that. Take the wheels off, some other little bolts on there, whatever you get to. And then it looks like you get a Allen wrench for it, which is nice. Um, uh, and then it looks like it gives you four body clips not sure if the clips hold all the battery or not but you get four so that's nice in case you lose some and then looks like some uh steering some kind of linkages either for steering or something like that so that's nice to get two spare parts probably figure if you wreck that's what's gonna break maybe um and then we'll see how these kind of tie into the car you know where they go and everything we'll kind of check that out as we go along uh as far as the controller goes it reminds me of that one brand, the Dumbo brand that uh, Kevin Tabla always uses. Uh, he says it gets really, really good range. Um, it's a little bit different from the WL Toys one. The cool part is you can reverse the steering and the throttle servo. Here's your ESP adjustment. That's nice. Your steering trim adjustment and your steering dual rates. It does not have a throttle uh, rate adjustment. Then you have, wow, a few buttons on here. You have a little linkage for a lanyard. That's nice. Typically don't get that. Nice foam wheel. It feels pretty good. Nice little rim there. Trigger isn't bad. Four AA batteries. Uh, you get a, a button. I thought it was a switch at first, but this is a button. And then you get this switch here, which is one, two, and three. So that's cool. And a button. So that's really nice. Um... We'll figure out what's for what, you know, once we actually get into it. So let's go ahead and set the controller right here. And this is the, whoops. Yeah, I just completely knocked that controller off the table. Let me put it back up here really quickly. Sorry about that. So here we have the vehicle. This is the car. Uh, this is the same vehicle, but it is the car body. Uh, you get four body clips. You can see it's got that clear protection on it. I'm going to leave that on there for now. Uh, just when I first, you know, learning to figure out how to drift it. I don't want to bang the body up too bad. We'll just take these pins off and put them right here. You get four pins to hold the body on. Uh, and you can do mods like the uh, magnetic body, body mounts and a bunch of other stuff. Oh, we have a wire for the light. So make sure you disconnect this. You don't rip this wire out. It does have lights in the front only so far on this body at least. We'll set the body right there. And then the main event, the car itself, looks pretty decent actually. So right off the bat, looking at it, it's got the drift tires uh, for drifting. Um, uh, it's got a nice, yep, nice foam bumper. It's got like three levels to it. So it's got the bottom one and then another. Uh, it's got a longer one and a shorter one. Probably a body fits it differently. So that may be the case, but that's quite a bit of cushion. So that should be able to take an impact. It's got a plastic chassis, which is fine. Uh, it's nice to have a little flex. Uh, it'll kind of flex back. Then you got a back... Um, splitter uh and it does have a light in the back so that's kind of cool i wish they would have done two of them to make it look like kind of like brake lights but it does have one at least uh you can see the lighting is ran plugs in so it does have two plugs for lighting one of them got unplugged obviously when we took the body off um looks like the back is two piece is the top and the lower arm uh you got a metal dog bone metal coupler uh metal CV looks like uh, these these are nice thick plastic looks like you get springs I don't feel like they have oil in them uh, it does already have one spacer in there to I guess make it a little firmer um, that's cool then you have a metal uh, drive shaft that's nice all metal a metal motor I'd say by the size of it I'd say a 380 if I had to guess um, 380 there normally would be an off and on switch here, but I guess they decided to have it on the all-in-one system. You get a actual servo. It is a five-wire servo, like WL Toys and a couple other manufacturers use. So you're not gonna be able to use your standard uh, servo without replacing this. 
uh, the all-in-one. Uh, looks like it has a plastic brace across the top to reinforce the chassis. Uh, and then these look like the linkages. These extra pieces look like the steering linkages. So maybe uh, people are wrecking these and they're breaking. They offer to throw some in. I'm curious if they're longer or shorter, if anything like that. Nope. They're the same exact linkages. So maybe uh, from wrecking the snap or something, that's nice that they uh, were that they threw in a couple extras for each side. Uh, to me, they look the same length. Like I didn't notice a difference in the length or anything to you know to, to see if that would change anything. Let me double check that. I want to make sure. Uh, nope. Nope. It's the same exact length. So I guess that's nice that they give you those spares. I guess folks have broken those before. They're probably the most common thing that break on them. Uh, seems to have some kind of servo saver on her. You can see that spring, the servo saver. Um, and then the same suspension design, two pieces plus the linkage for the steering. So that's not bad. Metal uh, dog bone, metal coupler again. Uh, you can see the diffs. I would imagine the diffs are probably even metal. I'm not 100% sure on that. We'll have to check that out. Uh, if they're metal, they may be. I may take that apart later on and investigate. Uh, let's see if it's an open diff. And yes, it is an open diff. It is, a, it is a little stiff, though. It is a little tighter. Yep, it is an open diff. Uh, there's the little antenna. Then there's obviously the all-in-one. Your steering servo plugs in. Your tail lights. It's even marked. Everything is marked. I love that. So it says tail lights and then headlamps. So obviously plug them in the correct one. And then power comes off to the motor right here. And then uh, power, uh, obviously, we're plugs in for the steering servo. And then there is a little power button right there. So that is technically how to turn on. You probably could reach under there and turn it on. Um, and then under here, I was right. They do use a clip for the battery. So in case you lose one, you do have four extras. And then it's, this is on like one of these things where it just pops off and this slides over. You can remove the battery. It is a, looks like a 7.4 volt. It's using the 18650 cells, the, these big cells right here. Uh, these are okay for this application. Uh, 7.4 volts, 1200 milliamps. They're not the highest discharge rating. So these will only do like anywhere from 5 to uh, 20 Cs. I've never seen them higher than that. Maybe a 30, I think, was the highest I've ever seen it. So I'm not sure what C rating it is. doesn't say on there. Balance lead. It is a JST connector. Uh, I do have, I think, a 500... A 400 and a couple other 400s as well. Those would be kind of small. The 500 probably be the, the one I would use at all of them. I do have a 650 and a 500. I would use a 650 and a 500 for sure, but I wouldn't go below that. Uh, and these are obviously JST. The battery tray's a decent size. You can actually find this size batteries, JST, uh, 7.4 uh, volts for sure. Uh, I actually have an 800 as well, I forgot. I do have an 800 for my, um, what is that? For the, um, bu -bu 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 -bu. for the uh, Citation Longitude, it uses three and two cell. I don't recommend three cell just because of this guy mainly. Uh, that all in one, I doubt it can handle three cell. I've never seen anything like it, so I wouldn't experiment on that unless you upgrade the electronics. And then the motor, uh, they do have a brushless version as well, I do believe. So I think that one can handle maybe three cell. So let's go ahead and put this clip back in. So I think that covers most of that stuff. Uh, so we will quickly just plug this up while we're here and it's easier to get to. Uh, once you're done with RC, always, always unplug these because they slowly will drain the battery and then it'll kill the battery and then that will suck. So kind of tuck these wires in here. Kind of push this up forward away from the other ones. Uh, we'll quickly plug in the front lights because I'm sure that switch affects one of them. I think affects the lights, and then one of them affects the ESP, the uh, the gyro stabil stabilization system. I'm curious to see how that works for drifting. Like if it keeps you, maybe it works better if you're trying to go around a track with a time and you don't so you don't lose control, like a real car with stabilization. I'm not 100% sure on how uh, or how you would use that. I think that's how that goes in. Nope, oh, hold on. No, nope, this way. This way I can see the little, you can see the little grooves. There we go. Push it all the way in. We'll pop the body on real quick. Make sure everything's good there. We'll just line it up. 
Now you can see the plastic um, clear stuff still on there. There we go. We'll just go ahead and pop on four clips really quickly. And then the last thing we're going to need is, um, let me put these clips on, is four double A's for the transmitter. So what I'll do is after I get these clips on, we'll take a quick, we'll take a quick pause real fast. I'll move this stuff out of the way and we'll pop in the battery and then we'll see all the functions and then see if we could maybe do a couple uh, drift donuts right here on this uh, carpet. And then we are obviously going to do the first run outdoor. Uh, we're going to do the first run outdoors, obviously, for it. Um, that way you can see its full drifting potential, have a little more room. We maybe go to a parking lot. We may even set up a little track. I do have that rubber median stuff or what's it called? Apexes. So we can make kind of a little track in the driveway. Obviously, once it's dry, I don't mind doing it. I don't think this is waterproof, so I don't want to mess this up really before I had a good run. Looks like there's some metal right here. You can see some metal right there. Metal for the pins holding the arms on. Metal where the shocks are connected. Um, looks like it has quite a little bit of metal there. That's the frame underneath. It looks really good. They do have quality control for it. So there we go, guys. So we're going to move all this. Throw some batteries in the transmitter and then we'll be right back okay guys so we got some batteries in the uh transmitter so i guess we'll go ahead and turn on the car first uh, we'll go car first what's weird is toy grade is like usually car first hobby grade is always the controller first maybe we'll do it this way so we'll turn on the transmitter you can see that's flashing looking for a signal I do like the way this body looks. I think it looks better with the other wheels on it too because these drift tires are a little bit smaller. Press and hold. You can see it searching, give it a little throttle. And it went solid. So you can see the lights. We'll really quickly, we'll flash, we'll click on these buttons and see what it does for the car. So we'll try this button first. One, this is position one. Position two, position three. I guess that's an ESP. One, no lights, click it again. So this is the button right here. So click it once, just red, click it again. Red and white, click it again, nothing. So those are the options. And I guess these are the ESP positions, one, two, and three, channel four. So I guess that is the ESP. So we'll quickly... <laughs> let's put this that's in position one let's go to position two and position three. Oh, wait a minute so to me that seems like it's the speed of the vehicle so you have one two and three because i was wondering because there's no uh throttle dual rate so how would you be able to adjust that um I guess the ESP is on a dial. This is all the way up, and then this is all the way down. So let's turn it all the way up first. Oh, that is a huge difference when it comes to, uh, make sure that's straight. Let's turn the steering trim in the middle. Steering dual rates, we'll turn all that up. Okay, so let me show you real quick the, uh, this is, these are important things actually more than the run for this video. This is the steering speed. So let me hold the transmitter this way. So I'm curious when you're giving a gas, did you see, see the wheel turning and I'm not touching the steering? See that? That's the EXP. It is turned up all the way right now. I guess you can adjust that with this um, dial right there. Adjust it how much you want it. You, you can turn it all the way down to where it's off. That is nice. The steering trim is obviously for centering the wheel itself. Make sure it's on the ground and you turn it probably the ESP off. And then just let it go straight line. Dual rates is how fast, how sensitive you want the steering to be. And then obviously this is low 20%, probably 15 and 100. I would imagine like throttle, and then this is for turning off the lights and on. I'm gonna leave the lights off for now. I'm gonna try speed one drifting with 100% EXP. 
It still does decent drifting. Maybe when you're first getting the vehicle. Oh, now you've seen that going for carpet top. These tires, these wheels are a lot slicker on the tile. Uh, to me, like the like the street or concrete is the best surface. Carpet is okay. So you can see me, I'm drifting okay. Okay, let's go to speed to the middle switch. Oh yeah, way more power for drifting. Now the ESP is on, so let's see. Boo. I'm almost too much power, I'm almost flying out. Let's go all the way to full speed. It's kind of straining up too much. Let's go ahead and turn the ESP completely off. I turned it all the way down. So let's try it out. This is no ESP. So the button always swings out on it. Let's turn the ESP up and see. Yeah, it does keep the back end from swinging all the way around and you spinning out. It does do that. I'll give it that. It does seem to make it a little bit easier. Obviously, you still have to learn to settle the throttle. Like, this isn't very much room, but it's giving you an idea. Uh, obviously, it's got reverse. And then carpet is not the best drifting surface either. I'm curious if you turn the lights on. If it turns on when you go backwards, little stuff like that. So the light is on. No, it just stays on. Dude, you could totally drift so good on a street with this thing. And the 1200 should give you decent run time for a smaller, like, 380 motor like this. If you don't have the lights on, the ESP does take a little bit more power. That is definitely interesting, though, with the ESP. You can see it working. Like if you're giving it gas, you're moving, and you turn, see the wheel turning. Go this way, you slide that way, see it turning. So that is interesting. It does work, obviously. Uh, the cool part is you can reverse the steering. If you're left-handed, you can reverse it for you. Um, so it's got brake, and then you can go into reverse. You can do some cool drifting with this thing, dude. It's got... It's got a lot, plenty of power. That's in, that's in the middle setting, too. Let me see if the diffs are still just as tight. The diffs are a little tight. I don't know if that's going to break down with time. Uh, the bumper goes right up to the body, so they fitted it perfectly. You can see that? It goes right up to the body. So that's nice. Same thing with this one. Oh, there's a spoiler, this little step down. That's why they did the bumper the way they did with the longer piece and then the shorter one. So you still have protection up here and right here. That's nice. It fits it perfectly. Um, what we can do is really quickly, we can change the tires. So the table's over here. So we'll grab our tool and the tires. Uh, and then we'll change one. I also want to see if the actual little shaft in here not the dog bone and just the coupler is metal. I want to see if the whole uh, thing is. So we'll just quickly do a back one. So it's still on. I'm not worried about it being on. Boom, came right off. Let's see how it works. So, ooh, cool. So you have a little disc. See that? Whoops, I just dropped the pin. So there is a pin that slides in. Look at that. That's what I wanted to see and show you guys. So I do have to locate that little pin which I will. 
uh, right here. I found it. Okay, so this is what's so cool about this one. Um, right off the bat, let me make sure I get a good shot for you guys. Everything is metal. Check that out, guys. Let's tone this light down. It's almost a little too, too bright. Let's go ahead and just tone it down a little bit so I can see stuff. There we go. That is much better. So you can see right off the bat, ball bearing, which is very important for the smoothness of the vehicle. Ball bearing, metal uh, shaft right here, metal coupler, uh, metal dog bone, probably metal gears, metal lengthening, metal support system there. Uh, I'm almost certain to say that the diffs are probably metal because this thing has quite a bit of power. And then what you would have to do is to reassemble it, you would have to take these little pins. Do not lose these little pins. This pin just simply goes into the hole, just like so. There we go. Center it. And then the cool part is, <laughs> is this. This brake. I like that a lot. So this, you see that little notch, obviously lines up, goes onto it. And then you would put your wheel, obviously. And then last but not least, the little nut that holds the wheel on. And then you got to watch it. You can't over tighten these wheels. Oh man, this looks so much better with a white wheel on there. You can over tighten these wheels. I can tell you that right now. Uh, so you want to tighten it to where the wheel will spin freely. But it's not too tight because you'll see it kind of drag a little bit. You don't want it too, too tight. See if you over tighten it. I'm going to potentially over tighten it. It turns kind of slow, like it's sticking a little bit. So you don't want to over tight. You want it to where the wheel's not going to come off, obviously. But just hand tighten it. Boom, nice and smooth. That already looks so much better, in my opinion. And the truck does look good. Don't get me wrong. The truck looks good. I think it's just because these tires are so flat and skinnier from uh, being a drift tire. So this is not going to take long at all. I have to take off the pins and everything like the other ones. I'll just quickly change the tires. I'll try to do this as fast as I can, like a pit crew. Zip, zip, done. Got that wheel off. Pop the other one on, just like that. And then last but not least, the little nuts. Go on there to hold it on. And that's nice. Like I said, they gave you a metal one instead of a cheap plastic one. That's a nice touch. That one's perfect. Boom, I'm already done with that side. On to the next one. So that's also a nice touch is having, having another set of tires. Now you obviously can buy parts for it because they have a parts list. Uh, I'm sure it's going to have to be one of those sites directly from like, from like either Banggood or AliExpress or Geek. Like one of those type of websites. Amazon may, may carry some parts for it. I'm not 100% sure on that. Amazon may carry parts for it. I'll look into it. I will put the link where I got it. My, I got mine from Amazon. Oh, I did not say the price. This was, I don't know if I got it. I think I got a small coupon for a few bucks, not much. Uh, I think with taxes, mind you, I live in Ohio, so it's 7% taxes. With taxes, I think it was $83. And the coupon knocked it down. It would have been a little bit more than that. It would have been closer to 90 So I think that's not bad. Uh, the brushless version is 120 or 119 plus taxes. So you're maybe 126, 125 ish. Uh, I heard that. How, well, I heard that the brushless is good and bad. Like speed, it's faster, but I feel like they say it's not as smooth with a throttle. That's the issue they have. For some reason, there we go. For some reason, with these uh, cheaper, like Banggood, and hold on, that's another thing I didn't tell. The suspension seems to work fine. See that? It's kind of stiff, which you want for an on-road car. When you drop it, it does bounce, but when you're driving, it doesn't seem to bounce. Oh, that's got grip for days. Holy smoke, that's only in the medium one. Let's do it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dude, this car is gonna be fast. Yes, grippy tires. This is gonna be, it has open diffs. This is gonna be a mean little, uh, not just carpet, oh, carpet racing. You're gonna hook up, hang every turn, no problem. Wow, the suspension actually gets over a little bump. Uh, carpet racing, this will be a fun car. Oh, it pops a wheelie, watch this. Yeah, it, pop, it popped a wheelie. It literally will pop a wheelie. That is insane. 
and the ESP will only help you in racing because it'll help you keep you from losing the back end or whatever. Watch, it'll it'll pop a wheelie. Huh. Yeah, it. Yeah, see that? Oh my goodness, this thing is fast. How fast does it say on the box? Like, I don't know if it's just the way it's geared. The low end on this thing is insane. And I understand they would do that for, uh, what do you call it? For the, uh, for the drifting, which is kind of essential. But like, there's no speed on this thing from the box. So what we're gonna have to do is, obviously I have a little GPS, uh, GPS little device. I can double side sticky tape, put it inside or outside the body, probably inside um, for aerodynamics. And we're gonna have to do a full charge on it and we're gonna have to rip it while it's still, you know, not beat up and fresh out of the box experience. Obviously I'm not gonna change a single thing. I am gonna do it both with both wheels just to show you guys the speed, how much of a difference there is having drift tires compared to these. Dude. This thing would be a mean little racer. I think there is one 12 scale, one 16 scale. There may even be one 18 scale, one 10 scale. Uh, there's a, a few different things. Uh, when you have the racing, is it's really about the size of the motor and size of the vehicle. A lot of them are brushed, a lot of them aren't brushless. There is probably brushless classes as well. Man, but the acceleration on this, like let me lift it up. I haven't been able to give it full throttle here, by the way. That is impressive. And to be 100% honest with you, this powertrain is still stiff. You can squeeze a little more performance up when it's not so stiff, when it's a lot smoother. And that could be a little bit too tight wheel. Let me make sure these wheels aren't like... I feel like I may have over tightened some of these. Let me make sure, see if that's what the thing is just over tightened from the factory. Dude, that's a little a tiny tiny bit better i don't think it's enough to that's definitely a stiff diff um would i rebuild this and a hundred percent i would rebuild these diffs and put some better grease in there uh some better lube it probably has some thicker like cheap like gear grease uh, i would probably go with something lighter in there clean it real well make sure there's no metal shavings or debris clean up everything uh smooth it up put fresh lube, put it back together, feel it in my hand with the diff out. That's how you do it. And man, oh, that already feels better, dude. It were a little tight. Oh my goodness, look at that. It left little burnouts in the carpet. Hold on, like it didn't obviously burn the carpet, but like it leaves like when it breaks the traction watch. I'm right here, ready? And <laughs> it spins the tires. <laughs> Dude, this thing will rip these tires. I can see why I have replacement tires for it and replacement drift tires. This thing is a little ripper. Now I see why the guys love the truck so much. Like this is liked more than the brushless version because those reasons I was telling you guys about the throttle and um, how like it's not as sensitive and it's kind of like delayed. Um, this would be better for drifting. A lot of even professional uh, drift vehicles are most likely, most of them are uh, brushed. A lot of them come factory brushed. Uh, unless you get a really nice brusher system that is sensitive like the brushed one is, right? That's the main thing. You got to get a really nice one. If you buy the cheap $30, $40 ones, they have a delay. They're hard to adjust. Um, just a pain in the butt. So, yeah. Uh, I wonder why they didn't put a speed on the box. That would be a selling point. Like, this thing is fast. And it's got, like, these little plastic things on here. I don't know if it's to help protect the body or hide the screws or whatever. Uh, it looks like that because there is a still the plastic film. I am going to leave it on this because this is a ripper. It's going to get banged up. So I'm going to leave it on there for now. Man, this is going to end up probably being uh, down the road. Like, a lot of RCs, what people don't realize is I have 320 channels, and only a couple of them have, like, two or three videos on the thing. That means I've had hundreds of items on the channel, and I can't keep everything. It would be impossible. The room I would need would be in Central. Now, if I had a big pool barn or a big barn or somewhere I could store this stuff, I would totally do it. But it's just not feasible in a home to keep that much stuff. So that's why you saw my room go through so many changes is as products flow through. I've had racks. I've tried it that way to store more. It's just not enough room. I've had tubs. I literally have, I think it is six 
big garbage bags of RCs in our shed. <laughs> so there's just no way to keep everything. I would love to, but I can't. So this is definitely going on one of those lists where if it keeps performing the way I think it's going to do on, uh, it's like a little roll cage, by the way. You can see the little cage underneath there too. It's like a little roll cage. And you can put a guy in there actually, which I may do. Uh, if it keeps performing, I actually have a pilot guy that's like half cut off like it would fit in here. And you would go in here pretty well. Uh, that would be cool. But uh, if it keeps performing like it does, this is probably going to be a keeper and a really good drift vehicle. Uh, obviously, these tires are more for racing and grip. And these are obviously for drift. So that's nice that they included both. They gave you extra pins for the body. They gave you extra linkages for the steering. That's probably the most... Because it's so fast that it hits. The bumper doesn't go past the wheel. The wheel may hit in a lot of cases. It's probably a snap nose, which makes sense considering everything else is metal. It's probably the weakest point in these. So uh, a lot of it's metal. These uh, arms seem to be really thick and kind of beefy. So that's a good thing. The plastic chassis seems stiff with the brakes going across there. It's actually pretty stiff. So all in all, I'm impressed with this vehicle for what I could do inside. Uh, the outside will truly tell its performance potential, its speed. So the next video is going to be a run video outside. We'll rip it, drift it, race it, have some fun. And then the following video will be a speed run because it needs one, in my opinion. And then that way I give you guys an accurate speed and post it. So that's it, guys. This thing is incredible so far. I can't say buy it or don't buy it yet just because it needs that outdoor run. But if it's any indication how it's going to perform and how cool it looks, uh, I could safely say this is definitely a buy. And it's parts availability. A lot of folks will buy those uh, cheaper drift vehicles that don't have parts for it or like at Target or whatever, even the Jada ones. And you cannot get parts for them. They're like, where can I get tires? Where can I get this? When I, you can't unless you buy another one and keep one as a sparse parts vehicle maybe maybe you break one don't throw it away keep it as a parts vehicle be a vehicle if you plan to get another one but honestly if you're spending you know 40 something bucks plus tax for one of those um uh, i'd probably save up a little extra and buy one of these they do go on sale from time to time banggood may have a little cheaper you will wait longer though and by the time you add shipping and everything else and other costs to it it may be similar so in my opinion uh, so far, I will try to look for deals for you guys and see if I can find any other coupons for this. Things change from when I bought it, so I paid 83 with a coupon. Uh, yours might be 90 because you don't have that coupon. It just depends on the timing and everything like that and how many they have. And they're all multiple sellers that's selling the same thing. It'll be like this brand of a seller, this brand of a seller, but it's the same car. You can see the way it looks. It's the same thing. As long as it says brushed. Uh, as long as they give you a battery and the drift tires and it has the EXP, this will be the same vehicle. I think there is a cheaper version that does not come with uh, ESP and doesn't come with drift tires. It's just a truck, I think, or a car. That's fine, too, if you're not into drifting. Uh, there are other versions as well that offer, like, two, three batteries. That's fine if you, uh, it, if, you know, if this turns out to be a really nice vehicle and you really like it, it's not a bad idea to buy multiple batteries. I probably wouldn't go with the cheap little cell ones. I would actually buy GS, JST two cell shorty packs for these. You should be able to get 2,000 milliamps for sure in there. Probably 2,000 to 1,500, probably 1,500 to 2,000, somewhere around there. Shorty packs that actually have a little bit of a kick and actually will make these faster. So we'll also look into that and mods and other things as well. So stay tuned for all that. Hi, buddy. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun with this vehicle. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Yeah, I got to walk over and turn it off. <laughs>